Hello viewers, Super GT here with Watkins Glen International now added into Gran Turismo 7. I thought it was time for me to jump on and have some online races. As you can see, it proved to be fairly chaotic, including me murdering half of my opponents. So let's jump in, shall we? I uh, created an online lobby and I had some willing participants who jumped in at the chance of playing the new circuit. First of all here, we're going to be doing group 3 cars, 3 laps around the long course. And I am about to witness already our first... Oh, fake taxi coming in out of nowhere and obliterating someone into a new dimension. And uh, yes, yeah, it only took until turn 1 for that to happen. And to be fair, as I said in the uh, intro... It was a fairly chaotic scene, really, as uh, that there demonstrates as the Spaniard gets uh, vaporised. And uh, to be fair, he did flash his hazards there to say sorry. But sorry's no good when you're dead, really, is it? So I'm not sure if that's good enough. Um, more cars here all over the shop. So I lose positions, I gain positions. I can't really describe everything that just happened there in the opening one minute. It really is, as that guy goes sliding off into the barrier. Uh, for our first proper barrier visit of the video, it's only taken a minute. Incredible. Now, I suppose this was going to happen when you have a new circuit. And, you know, not everyone's familiar with Watkins Glen. I, uh, I played a lot of this track on Forza, so I'm fairly familiar with it. But it's not a track that's really been in the Gran Turismo series. And so... A lot of us here have a lot of learning to do of the track, but also of just how to drive. There's always that. So I find myself here in my natural habitat of uh, P6, would you believe. And uh, the Suzuki VGT here, uh, proving to be a fairly solid car in the class, although that's really just because I'm just not dying and everyone else is crashing and dying. Uh, so, you know, it could be different if it comes down to an actual proper race where everyone's not crashing. There's another crash up there. I'm going to go past the Supra with a bit of contact. And we're going to make further contact here as, as we head into the uphill S's. And I'm P, P4 right now. That's a, that's a solid return in the opening exchanges. And I would call it a race, but I think that was more like a destruction derby. In that first uh, first lap there through the S's through the sorry it's the bus stop the bus stop chicane crucial point of the circuit and from what we'll see later on it's definitely a new shadow realm portal and here on the exit of this corner just dipping my wheels onto the grass on the exit very easy to do that and before you know it you're you're fishtailing violently towards the scene of an accident, although on this occasion I managed to just keep it under control, losing two positions to these two dear chaps here. Can we get one of them back? It looks like we can. Up the inside in towards the penultimate corner. Watkins Glen, a lot of fast flowing open corners. There's not too many really slow ones to be honest. Even the chicane is quite a fast chicane. Now, Professor Chaos there with a fairly slow run off the exit of the final turn and that means we're going to have the inside line coming down into the braking zone for turn one and uh, whoa, a bit of bit of contact on the way in a little bit wide there I was trying to work out what the track limits were for that first corner of the exit because depending on the race series actually you see there I get a penalty depending on the race series some race series they let you race way out up to the barrier pretty much but I think on this version of the circuit on Gran Turismo 7 they only allow you to go two wheels on the curb two wheels beyond and nothing more than that so I got that penalty served it and unfortunately that put me a bit further back here into eighth and I misjudged this breaking point like an absolute noob and that was that really should have been third if I had just driven like a proper driver but there you go P8 in our first race it was good fun, but we're going to try out the BMW M6 GT3 Endurance Model 16. 
to give you its full name, starting towards the front of the pack, this time around. As we hurtle down towards turn one now, I'd advise that you don't look at the livery of the pink car. Um, just, just don't look at it, okay? Now, through the exit of turn one, you see just how close this is. Uh, as we hurtle up the hill, and uh, cars all around me here, why well, it's a good idea to have the radar up on the screen, there's no doubt about that, as I make contact with the pink car that you should not be looking at. As he covers the inside, I'm going to go to the outside, fair enough. Into the chicane, they're going to go three abreast. Oh my goodness, this surely is not going to end well for someone. But to be fair, they did a good job there. Matthew over the grass, he comes back on, he keeps it under control. Pink car disappears from the scene, thankfully. And now with three abreast, as another Supra. So you've got the two Spaniards in the lead here, the NSR team. Lots of cars, very close. And this is what I was hoping for with Watkins Glen. From my experience of Forza, it always produces a fairly close race, and that is certainly the case here. I'm looking forward to it potentially being in next week's daily races, and I do believe it's going to be round six of the Nations Cup, which is coming up very soon. And so we will be able to, therefore, experience this track a little bit more in the near future. Now, what this guy is about to experience is getting overtaken with a beautiful move up the inside into the third to last corner there. The gap was there. Had to, had to do it, really. I think that is, that might be the slowest corner on the track. One of, anyway. So we went for it, went for the move. And now I have to hunt down his NSR teammate with a, an 8 tenth gap. Although, at the front of the pack here, this guy's driving pretty well. This BMW feels pretty good around this circuit, to be fair. I would say it feels better than the Suzuki that I was just driving. It does feel a bit better. It's a bit more powerful. And I think around this circuit, you've got to be good around the, on the curbs as well, especially through this bit. You can really hammer this section. Uh, the bus stop, I really think that's make or break of your lap. And definitely gain a lot of time through there and i say you gotta use the curbs there's actually not too many curbs uh, corners where you do it's just the bus stop where you do you have to be very committed and use a fair amount of the curbs so you see i would say we've definitely caught up with this dear soul in front of us as we uh pretty, pretty, pretty much halfway through the race as uh, i can't really speak properly that was a bit of a weird uh, piece of commentary there uh, definitely catching up here that was a semi-slow exit as you can see, he's just beginning to edge out slightly. I feel like I was good on this section on the previous lap. Get the car in. Missing the apex slightly there. And uh, this is a good battle between the two of us. He's driving the uh, the uh, classic Supra. It seems to be more than a match. Although he goes a little bit wide there into the barrier. Grazes barrier. Into the penultimate turn. Lap number two of three. The sun glinting off of his car and blinding me temporarily and have we got the run he shifts gear you see that momentum swap there across the line to set the fastest lap of the race and take the lead of the race incredible scenes here as uh, now the dynamic of the race changes as I'm no longer the chaser I am the chasee is he close enough to go if for the move into the bus stop no not quite carry as much speed through here as we possibly can then it blends nicely into the long right hander here down the hill into the boot this corner here is the chute but this whole section is called the boot because um, if you look at a track map it looks like a boot so that kind of makes sense really doesn't it now penultimate turn we just opened up a small gap, which meant that he wasn't really close enough to go for a move. And that means we come through to win the race in, quite frankly, the best win in motorsport history. There's just no question about that. And anyone who thinks otherwise is, is deluded, really. Okay, I decided to set up another lobby. This time we're going to go for the short course. As you can see, the two options available. There aren't options available for the no chicane version. Now this guy, he joined the lobby, but he was missing his work. And I just let him know that that behavior is just not tolerated here. So he better get back to work and leave this lobby. 
because I will be phoning his employer to let him know that that kind of behaviour, that, you know, that just doesn't stick here on the Super GT channel. Because if you're contracted to work, then, you know, you better be working. You better not be doing some Super GT open lobbies. That's, you know, that's just not good, is it? Anyway, this was my first race in the short circuit. I upped it to five laps and I changed it to group 4. I felt like group 4 would be a very good class for this kind of circuit and um, on this first race um, as much excitement as there was really was this car who decided just to spin around a million times and there he is look at that and then he, he decided to move a bit more and then he died completely and stopped moving um, but that's about the full excitement of that race so we'll kind of gloss over that one quite quickly before moving on to this one I went for the uh, the Dodge Viper fairly cool car American car American circuit let's do it and I thought let's pull over go to the back of the pack and assess the carnage from a rearward perspective and there was a bit of lag there and to be fair if you look at the people in the lobby it was mostly Australians and uh, it was at New Zealanders. I do f do forgive me, people, for getting the flag wrong. But what that does mean is a fair amount of lag. As uh, well, that's just kind of what happens when you're racing people around the world. It's just what happens. But to be fair, you know the lobby settings here. Oh my goodness, what is going on? To be fair though, you know the lobbies have been slightly fixed um, from before, so it is better. There is an improvement. There is a bit of lag though, admittedly, with especially you know when you're playing against other people from all around the world, as we are here. But it you know it was it was good, it was fun, racing against my fellow Earth dwellers from oh my what what Earth, what Earth went went on there? Not quite sure. It looked like a lag, a bit of lag possibly. Maybe someone misjudged the breaking point. Um, before someone let me know that there's a wall there. Which was very useful information. It, if only he'd have told me, you know, a lap or so earlier, and I might have avoided it. But anyway, that left me with a lot of work to do that incident. Um, and then there was another incident, really, because this super went very wide, and I didn't know where he was going to come back on, and he comes straight back across towards the racing line. And we have almost a very similar accident. And that left me with even more work to do down here in ninth before then there was a massive puff of smoke and a car disappeared stage left shameful rammers getting their way this time around so unfortunately that guy was not able to avoid this guy kind of wanted to mow the lawn and I over overtook him and found myself in P6 by lap 5 I caught up with the leading group look at this this is lap 5 of 5 and there's a group of six fighting for the lead. I knew that the racing around this track could be pretty good. And this is the long right. So instead of going to the left there, you carry on to the right and cut off at half the circuit. A couple of people serving penalties here. So we're going to gain two positions. And it was, it was kind of a shame that there wasn't an extra lap here. Because I think there, was a, there would have been a shot of victory if that were the case. In towards the final corner. Can we get a decent run here in the Viper up against the Corvette? The battle of the American motors is not quite going to happen for me. It almost did, but it didn't. Finished P4. A solid recovery, though, after getting vaporised into the wall multiple times. Next up, I went for the Atenza. And this start was very weird. Um, lots of Mustangs just hitting each other, wanting to become human centipedes. And then into this corner, uh, this Mustang here just... It's, it's definitely a right-hander, okay, the first corner. He just doesn't really turn. Just decides that it's a straight and not a right-hander. Carries on going. And then ends up in the wall. A bit further round, car's wide. This guy just... He just decides, you know what, I don't really want to go around this corner. It's going to go straight into the wall. Fantastic stuff. Uh, so I find myself there in P10. How about now? P9. Oh, yeah, this is where I murder a couple of my fellow opponents boom and it was about this moment here that these guys realize their fates that they will now be walking the shadow realm traversing the shadow realm 
for the rest of their mortal days. Very unfortunate for them. But I do apologise for the murder. Uh, again, not that it helps. If you're dead, you're dead. Sorry doesn't really undo it, does it? So I'm not sure if that apology will be accepted. I hope it is, but who knows? Now in towards the final corner. A good little battle here with this McGann. As he goes for the move, pull off the old switcheroo. Fantastic. And uh, bring home a, a fifth position, ultimately, for that one. Uh, I did say sorry to those I killed. But again, I'm not sure the families are really going to be positive about that, are they? So, oh my goodness, super uh, getting stuck on the start line behind another car. Hurtling down towards turn one. Bit of contact with the cars either side of me. But we managed to just about get around. Somehow, we make it work. Let's see what we can do here then. Up behind Hungry Jack's Jaguar. Driven by Sicko666. Uh, which side are we going to go to here? This is usually a bit of a pinch point. And then you head towards the chicane. Look up the inside, are we? Let's try it. Oh, oh my goodness, have a look here. There's a... Well, it turns into a bowling alley, should we say. And someone back there uh, scored a strike. Cars left, right and centre. And after all that, managed to recover the car. And uh, find myself now in battle for P5. Yellow flag car spun around on the exit there. Another car slowed. Was that a penalty or a result of a crash? I'm not sure. But after serving a penalty that I had for driving too wide at turn one, we find ourselves then on th lap three. The two in front had a penalty. Uh, so the, the, you know, the track limits are fairly strict, I would say, especially on the exit of turn one. I've, that seemed to be the place where people were getting it the most, if not on this chicane here. But a lot on the exit of turn one, actually, that's the one you have to be quite careful of, of uh, going too wide. And on the exit here, uh, the Subaru serves the penalty and I move up into second and that was that really moved up into second finished P2 and a couple of really good races there it was, uh, it was actually really good fun and you know Watkins Glen was a pleasant surprise I did not expect to see this track being added but after a couple of races there yes there was some carnage but it was ultimately good fun and I really enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching and making it all the way to the end Get yourself subscribed if you're new to the channel and I shall see you next time. Have a good day. Goodbye.